In this PowerPoint, we'll review how to use reaction quotients to predict the direction of change a reaction mixture might make to get to equilibrium. A reaction quotient calculation allows us to answer the following question. If a reaction mixture containing both reactants and products is not at equilibrium, then how do we figure out in which direction it will go to get to equilibrium? So let's look at an example of this scenario. And here we'll look at the reaction between iodine gas chlorine, and chlorine gas to produce iodine monochloride gas. We're given initial concentrations and units of pressure atmospheres. So this is partial pressure of iodine is 0.114 atmospheres, chlorine 0.102 atmospheres, and our product iodine monochloride 0.355 atmospheres. Now if this reaction is not at equilibrium, which direction will it go in order to get to equilibrium? And by this I mean will we increase products and decrease reactants until we, until we reach steady state concentrations in the forward reaction? Or will the opposite reaction dominate? Will that go more quickly so that we decrease products and increase reactants until we reach our steady state concentrations? And to answer this question, we need to know where our current ratio of products and reactant concentrations stand compared to our equilibrium constant. So we can plug our current concentrations into the equilibrium expression and solve. However, since these are not equilibrium concentrations that we're plugging in, we're not technically calculating K, the equilibrium constant. Instead, we're calculating what's known as the reaction quotient, Q. And we can compare the value of Q we calculate to the value of K, our constant, to determine whether we need to produce more reactant or more product to reach our equilibrium steady state. And I'll point out again that the expression for the reaction quotient Q is the same as the expression for the reaction uh, constant, the equilibrium constant K. The big difference between the two is that the reaction quotient be, can be calculated with any concentrations, whether they're equilibrium or not. And as a result, the reaction quotient can have any value. It just depends upon whatever concentrations you use. In contrast, the equilibrium constant K is only calculated using equilibrium concentrations. And the result is that the equilibrium constant should always have the same value. So how can comparing Q to K tell us the direction of the reaction? Well, there are three scenarios. Q can equal K, Q can be less than K, or Q can be greater than K. Well, if Q equals K, then the concentrations we used must have been the equilibrium concentrations, and our reaction, therefore, is already at equilibrium. However, if Q is less than K, the reaction is going to proceed until we reach equilibrium. So that means our value of Q will increase ultimately until it is equal to the value of K. And to increase the value of our Q, our reaction quotient, in our ratio, we need to increase the numerator and decrease the denominator. Well, this will happen if the forward reaction occurs more quickly so that we use up more of our reactants and produce more of our products. Another way of saying this is that our reaction will shift to the right or in the forward direction until we reach equilibrium. Now if Q is greater than K, the reaction is going to proceed until uh, the value of Q decreases to equal the value of K. So for Q to get smaller, that means that our numerator has to decrease and our denominator has to increase. 
So we have to decrease our amount of products and increase our amount of reactants. And that means that the reverse reaction is going to have to occur more quickly. Another way of saying this is that our reaction will shift to the left or in the reverse direction until we reach equilibrium. Now let's return to our original example and determine the direction of the reaction between iodine and chlorine gas when we're given the initial partial pressures of our different gases of iodine, chlorine, and uh, iodine monochloride. We're also given the value of K sub P here, 81.9. So this is uh, partial pressures since all of our concentrations are given to us in units of pressure. So what we'll need to do is take our partial pressures and calculate our reaction quotient. We can then compare it to our value of K sub P to determine where our reaction is at with relationship to our equilibrium. So we'll use the equilibrium expression for this particular reaction, our product squared divided by our two reactants and substitute in the given partial pressures that we have for this situation. And we calculate in this scenario a Q value, Q sub P, of 10.8. Well, this is definitely less than our given value for K sub P of 81.9. So, because our Q is less than our K, that means that we're going to have to increase the amount of our products and decrease our reactants, or the reaction will shift to the right until we reach equilibrium. Let's look at one more example. And here we'll look at the reaction between methane gas and hydrogen sulfide gas to produce carbon disulfide and hydrogen gas. And we're given the equilibrium constant, a case of C this time, um, at the temperature of our experiment, which is 900 degrees Celsius. What we're asked to do is to determine for three different trials whether these, uh, these concentrations represent equilibrium concentrations, or um, if they're not, then in which direction must the reaction proceed to get to equilibrium. So first, we write the equilibrium expression. And since we're actually going to be using um, any concentration, we're going to label this as our reaction quotient, our Q value. And we substitute into this expression our experimental concentrations. So for experiment one, we get a Q value of 1.24. And this is definitely less than our K sub C value of 3.59. So Q is less than C, K sub C, so our reaction will shift to the right, will increase our products and decrease our reactants to get to equilibrium. For experiment two, our concentrations give us a Q sub C value of 5.86. So this is greater then our K sub C value of 3.59. So this means that our reaction is going to shift in the opposite direction. The reverse reaction will go more quickly so that we decrease the amount of our products and increase the amount of our reactants until we reach equilibrium. And finally, in experiment three, Our values give us a Q sub C value of 3.59. This is exactly the same as the equilibrium constant at this temperature, so our reaction is already at equilibrium. So in summary, we can use the equilibrium expression to calculate the equilibrium constant K or a reaction quotient Q. For K, the, only the equilibrium concentrations can be used, and one constant value should be calculated. 
However, for our reaction quotient Q, we can substitute in any concentrations and any value can be returned as the result. If we find that our Q equals our K value, the reaction's at equilibrium. If it's less than our K value, the reaction has to shift right or forward to produce more products to reach equilibrium. And if our Q value is greater than K, the reaction has to shift to the left or in the reverse direction so that we produce more reactants to reach equilibrium.